Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna look at the anatomy of the bladder and solve questions based on the associated pathologies. If you're new here and are interested in medical videos, MCQs, clinical experiences and interviews, subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is the urinary bladder and this is the urethra. These are the muscles of the pelvic floor. The bladder has smooth muscles which have muscarinic receptors and beta receptors. The urethra has alpha-1 receptors. Activation of the M receptors causes the bladder to contract and release urine. Activation of the beta receptors relaxes the smooth muscles of the bladder. Alpha-1 receptor activation contracts the urethra and prevents the outflow of urine. Usually, when the bladder has a certain amount of urine, you get a sensation to void. The M receptors will then get activated and the urine will flow out. Patients who lose control of voiding are known to have urinary incontinence. Based on specific defects, there can be three kinds of urinary incontinence. Overflow, urge and stress. We'll solve questions so that we understand these better. Question number one. A sensation of incomplete emptying of the bladder after urination is seen in Option A, overflow incontinence Option B, urge incontinence Option C, stress incontinence The answer to this question is overflow incontinence. In patients with overflow incontinence, the muscle here is underactive. This means that although there is a lot of urine in the bladder, the muscle won't contract. So, at one point, a lot of urine builds up and it overflows. Hence, this kind of incontinence is called overflow incontinence. Since the muscle isn't contracting properly, even after urination, there will be some amount of urine in the bladder. So, patients will have a sensation of incomplete bladder emptying even after voiding. In urge incontinence, the bladder is hyperactive, which means it contracts more than it's supposed to. When the bladder contracts, the patient has a high urge to urinate. Patients often complain that the amount of urination is very little. This is because even before the bladder has a lot of urine in it, it contracts, so very little urine comes out. Stress incontinence is caused by weak pelvic floor muscles. These muscles sort of hold the urethra together. So, when there is pressure from here, the pelvic muscles will prevent emptying of the bladder. When these muscles become weak, a slight increase in abdominal pressure is enough to cause intermittent emptying of the bladder. Question number two. Oxybutynin is used to treat overflow incontinence or urge incontinence. Oxybutynin is an M receptor antagonist. M receptors are involved in contracting the bladder. We know that patients with urge incontinence have an overactive bladder. So, in order to reduce the contraction, we use M receptor antagonists for urge incontinence. Question number three. Postmenopausal women are more likely to have dash incontinence due to decreased estrogen. Option A, overflow incontinence. Option B, urge incontinence. Option C, none of the above. After menopause, women have a decrease in estrogen in their bodies. This decreases elasticity and blood flow to the bladder and the urethra. Ultimately, there's urogenital atrophy. I like to think of it this way. When the bladder is like this, it can store a lot of urine. But, but when there's atrophy, the sensation of getting filled will occur more often, hence leading to increased urge to urinate. In postmenopausal women, urgency is followed by immediate loss of urine. Question number four. Incontinence caused due to diabetic neuropathy can be managed with Option A, Bethanicol Option B, Kegel exercise Option C, Oxybutynin Option D, diabetic neuropathy cannot cause urinary incontinence. The answer to this question is Bethanicol. 
Patients with uncontrolled diabetes can have neuropathy. Increased blood glucose can damage nerves. This can lead to decreased bladder sensation and impaired ability of the bladder muscles to contract. Hence, these patients are likely to have overflow incontinence. In overflow incontinence, the bladder is less active, so we provide M receptor agonists to manage this. Oxybutynin is an anti-muscarinic agent. It is used to treat urge incontinence. Kegel exercises are used to treat stress incontinence by strengthening the pelvic floor muscles. Question number 5. A patient complains of leakage of urine whenever she coughs. What is the underlying cause? Option A. Detrusor overactivity. Option B. Urethral hypermobility. Option C. Psychological stressors. Option D. None of the above. The answer to this question is urethral hypermobility. Leakage of urine while coughing indicates weakness of the pelvic floor muscles. If these muscles aren't strong enough, maneuvers which increase the abdominal pressure can cause bladder contraction and leakage of urine. When these muscles are weak, the urethra is more free to move. The hypermobility of the urethra decreases the sphincter pressure. So, when the patient coughs, the abdominal pressure is greater than the sphincter's ability to close the urethra. This leads to leakage of urine. Stress incontinence refers to abdominal stress and not psychological. Question number 6. An obstruction to the urethra can result in overflow incontinence or urge incontinence. Urethral obstruction leads to overflow incontinence. This is because this part is obstructed, so the urine will build up. After exceeding a certain threshold, there will be an overflow. Question number 7. Which of the following is more likely to cause urinary incontinence? Benign prostatic hyperplasia or prostate cancer? The answer to this question is benign prostatic hyperplasia. The urethra passes through the middle part of the prostate. BPH involves the central region. Prostate cancer, on the other hand, is likely to involve the posterior region. So, it doesn't quite interfere with the urethra. So, BPH is more likely to cause urinary incontinence as compared to prostate cancer. Question number 8. A 60-year-old male presents with gross blood in his urine. He has had two similar episodes in the past month. He does not have any pain associated with this. Cystoscope confirms the diagnosis. What is the greatest risk factor for his condition? Option A. Recurrent UTIs Option B. BPH Option C. Alcohol Option D. Smoking. When a patient presents with painless gross hematuria, always think about bladder cancer. Smoking is one of the greatest risk factors for it. Other risk factors are phenacetin, aniline dyes, and cyclophosphamide. Question number 8. ALS is likely to cause Option A, urge incontinence. Option B, overflow incontinence. Option C, none of the above. The answer to this question is none of the above. Although ALS does affect the upper and lower motor neurons, what's unique about it is that it does not cause bowel or bladder dysfunction. Question number 10. Early loss of bladder function is seen in Cauda equina syndrome or conus medullaris syndrome? The answer to this question is conus medullaris syndrome. If you want to know more about it, do take a look at this video. It'll be worth it. And if you're interested in more renal videos, do watch this one on renal tubular acidosis. Both of them have a lot of interesting questions. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it. Thank you.